Uh, hello, I am Omar Rafij, and this paper is called Simultaneous Video Stabilization and Moving Object Detection in Turbulence. It was published in PAMI this year, and uh, it's a joint work with Shen Li and Mubarak Shah. Uh, the problem we have is that uh, we uh, have a video uh, which was taken in uh, this kind of conditions. It's a desert, and uh, there is uh, atmospheric turbulence, and there is also a tiny moving object uh, in the scene and uh, we are interested in uh, two problems the first one is turbulence mitigation which means that we want to reduce the turbulence in this sequence and uh, for that typically people can use uh, registration uh, methods but the problem here is that uh, it will fail to register the moving object and will introduce artifacts we're also interested in the moving uh, object detection as well. Uh, so we can do background modeling, but the problem is noisy, and uh, also the background model cannot recover the original background. So we propose a, a method which uh, can take uh, basically the sequence and decompose it into uh, three components, uh, the object and the turbulence and the background, and this is solving the two problems concurrently. Our method uh, is called the three-term low-rank optimization. And uh, uh, in it we decompose, as I said, the sequence into the background. And the background will be the low-rank component of uh, the sequence. And the object, and the object will be the sparse component of the sequence. And the turbulence, which will be the dense error. The input to the uh, method is the frames. And uh, in this case, our frames are taken from uh, IR camera, and the quality is bad. So we uh, do some standard preprocessing steps, which include histogram equalization and uh, temporal averaging. And we input the uh, processed frames to the three-term uh, low-rank optimization. However, the sparse constraint that we enforce in, on the object is not enough, and I'll explain later why. To overcome that, we enforce an additional uh, constraint, uh, which comes from a turbulence model uh, that we build using uh, the, uh, an intensity and a motion model. We combine them, and we come up uh, with a turbulence model from which we uh, obtain an object confidence map. And uh, this map uh, will be feed to the uh, low rank uh, decomposition uh, as a prior. This is uh, the formulation uh, of our uh, low rank optimization. Uh, F is the frames matrix, where uh, we stack all the frames as columns of this uh, matrix. And it will be decomposed into those three components. A will be the background. And here we are looking to uh, find the low rank background. And O will be uh, the object, where we enforce uh, the, sparse, uh, compo uh, the sparse constraint on it with the L0 norm. And E will be the turbulence, uh, which uh, we uh, minimize its Frobenius norm. As you can see here, uh, the only constraint we have on the object is the uh, sparsity. And uh, it is not uh, enough. So we, uh, some sparse noise may still appear in the object uh, matrix. So we enforce an additional object constraint uh, here, which is uh, pi. And uh, pi weights the uh, elements of O such that the uh, element which uh, is uh, most probably uh, coming from uh, the background gets lower weight versus the one which is coming from the object gets higher weight. The object confidence map is coming from the turbulence model and we use a simple uh, model which is a mixture of intensity and uh, motion. Um, to capture the motion in the scene, we uh, overlay particles and we track them using um, optical flow. Now, um, the intuition of our model is that the uh, particles which are moving because of turbulence will be perturbing in their original location versus the uh, particles which are moving because of objects will be linearly uh, moving in the scene. And we do that using uh, two Gaussians. Uh, one is uh, in the intensity domain, and one is, the, uh, is, is in the position domain. And each is parameterized by its uh, mean and covariance. Now, this is illustrating basically what we do. Uh, so if the particle was at location x node, then it moves uh, to x. Then we maintain two Gaussians, 
One of them is maintained at the current location, and one of them is maintained at the original location. Now you can evaluate the probability that uh, the particle at this location belongs to the background using, using those two Gaussians based on the intensity at the current x and the location at the current x. So each one is, uh, so the intensity is evaluated uh, against this uh, Gaussian, which tells you how probable that this intensity is a background density, and also the location, which tells you how probable that this location is, um, is uh, uh, that this particle is here because of turbulence, not a moving object. So we combine those two Gaussians uh, in a simple uh, weighting uh, uh, function, and uh, this will give you uh, the confidence at every uh, pixel in time. And then uh, you can uh, have a confidence map for every frame, and uh, you, you can make a vector of that and stack them. And uh, since this confidence is the confidence of belonging to the turbulence, you complement it and you get the uh, confidence of belonging to the object. Uh, the way we do the uh, particle tracking is using particle advection, which is uh, integration of uh, optical flow. And this is an example showing our particles. As I said, each particle will be evaluated using two Gaussians. One is using the intensity domain, one is using the um, location. Now, the particle advection has lots of uh, discontinuities and drifting. Uh, because basically there will be so many areas which will not be covered uh, after a certain time with, uh, with particles. So we introduce a restoring uh, force which basically uh, acts toward the original uh, location of the particles and bring them back to their original location so that we can uh, continue processing the sequence. Uh, and uh, this is a simple uh, force uh, as uh, this, so uh, the x node again is the original location and x is the current location, and the gravity, por uh, gravity uh, the, the uh, restoring force, g, will uh, pull uh, the particle uh, back to its uh, original location, and it's proportional to the distance between x and x node, and uh, it can be represented this way, and we use a linear function for that. Now, this is showing the object confidence uh, that uh, we uh, obtained. So uh, in the uh, initial uh, frame, the particles are in their original location, and uh, uh, the uh, confidence is empty. There should be uh, red points, basically, indicating the uh, confidence. But here, it's empty at the beginning. At frame 70, the, uh, the, uh, the object starts moving, and we uh, catch a blob corresponding to him. And at frame 140, he uh, continues moving, and we continue um, tracking him. Then he disappears, and the particles come back to their original location. And because they come back, we can catch him again when he comes back on the other side. Now, had we not used the uh, restoring force, we will get this, which is, as you can see, uh, noisy, and uh, the particles can, cannot come back to their original location. Now, going back to our uh, three-term uh, uh, decomposition uh, equation, uh, which looks like this, now we want to uh, optimize it. And uh, the first thing we do is convex uh, relaxation. So we basically uh, uh, convert, to the, uh, convert the equation to its uh, Lagrangian form. We uh, bring those uh, two, com uh, two uh, components to the um, other side and weight them with tau and lambda. And um, and then we use the augmented Lagrange multiplier uh, method uh, to optimize this function. And uh, in that, we will introduce two uh, components, uh, this and this. This is the traditional uh, Lagrange, uh, the, this is the traditional Lagrange uh, function, and this is the augmented Lagrange. And uh, this, uh, 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 this F, yeah, no. So here, this y basically is the uh, is the Lagrange function matrix. Now, uh, to minimize uh, the, this function, uh, we uh, iteratively minimize the Lagrange uh, function. Then we update uh, the uh, Lagrange ma matrix. Now, uh, we use an approximate augmented Lagrange multiplier. The reason is that we need to optimize uh, with respect to uh, a and O and E jointly, but we can do that uh, separately, uh, and it becomes an approximate uh, Lagrange multiplier method. 
So we uh, optimize with uh, respect to each of them, and then we update each of them, and we do that iteratively. Now, because, because we are using the approximate, then we can uh, find a closed form solution for each one of those and, uh, at every iteration. And uh, this is done by a single value decomposition of this term. And then uh, each of them can be derived from uh, the eigenvectors of the singular value uh, decomposition. And this is by the, uh, the basically the, uh, the confidence map that we uh, derived. It appears here. And those derivations are in the appendix, in the, appendix uh, in the paper. This is the, uh, one of the results uh, on sequence A. We can decompose uh, the sequence and find the object and uh, the turbulence and uh, the uh, uh, background. Uh, this is the original sequence before we do the pre-processing. And, uh, and this is after the pre-processing. So this is, will be the input to the decomposition. And this is uh, sequence P, and we, here we get the object and the turbulence and the background. And this is sequence C, and the object will be uh, here, I think. And we catch him here. And this is sequence T. The object will appear over here. OK. Uh, we did some performance analysis. Uh, we have uh, uh, separated the analysis for the moving object detection and the turbulence mitigation. First, the moving object detection. Uh, qualitatively, we compared our method to a Gaussian mixture model and uh, an eigen background model and a KDE model, and our, uh, our uh, method shows better uh, results. And uh, this is for sequence two and for sequence three and uh, for sequence four. Now, uh, quantitatively, we annotated the data set and we measured the detection uh, where we have an overlap of uh, over 50%. And uh, we, uh, uh, we compute the ROC uh, curves for our method, which is in blue, compared to the other three methods. And uh, it's clear that we outperformed them. Uh, we also evaluated the components of, the, uh, of, the, of our methods. So uh, those are the original frames, and I showed the detection here. Then after you obtain the confidence map, you can get blobs uh, of the objects, but they are noisy, as you can see. And then after uh, you uh, do the optimization, you refine uh, those uh, blobs, and then you can get rid of the noise and get uh, uh, a much accurate uh, blobs. In terms of uh, turbulence mitigation, we measure the uh, peak signal to noise uh, ratio. Um, uh, this is the original uh, sequence, and it's peak uh, uh, signal to noise ratio. And this is if you do registration, then it improves. And this is if you do the three-term decomposition, uh, then you get something similar to uh, the registered, um, except that uh, in the registration you'll have artifacts uh, because of the moving object, because you don't, do not consider the moving object. So for example, here you can see that uh, uh, this is the original frame, this is our method, and this is if you use registration. And uh, if you use registration, because of the moving uh, object, uh, the, uh, the uh, contours of this uh, car get deformed. And in our method, uh, you only remove the object. And uh, this is another visualization where uh, the, uh, the original frame is, uh, is in the R channel and the uh, process frame is in the G channel. And the difference here is that you can see only is the object is done there because now it's in the object matrix versus uh, in registration, you'll get the formation uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the contours of this object here. In the future, we, we are uh, trying to uh, enforce space temporal uh, smoothness in uh, each of those uh, frames. So as you notice, maybe each, we process each of those uh, frames uh, separately, but we want to introduce some uh, space temporal smoothness. And thank you. <laughs>